Hi everyone, today we're going to get into some uh, other facts about triangles. So we're starting to get to the point where we can really learn a lot about how triangles are related to one another and related to themselves. Um, now what we want to do is investigate some internal structures of the way triangles work. The first thing we want to talk about today is something called the triangle inequality. Now the triangle inequality is a fairly simple idea. What it says is that if I'm trying to build a triangle, then there is something that has to happen. Any two sides of the triangle, if I add them up, must be longer than the third side. Okay, that's the triangle inequality. And when you, it, it's, it's a strange one at first, but when you start investigating it, it makes a lot of sense. Let's take a look at a picture. I pull up GeoGebra here because this is a nice way to do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the segment tool, and I'm going to try to build a triangle. Okay, here's segment one. Okay, segment two, I'm going to build like this. Now, segment three, Notice that if I'm going to make a triangle, okay, that the length of segment F and G, if I add those together, you can see it necessarily has to be longer than the third side, otherwise they wouldn't form like a point, right? Any two of these sides, if I add them together, has to be longer than the third side. Let's take a look and see what would happen otherwise. So what I've done here is I've created two segments. Segment G is a length of uh, 7, you can see that here. And segment um, uh, F is length of 5. I'm going to go ahead and um, put the numbers on the graph. Good. Now you can see the 5 and 7. And so I've fixed these segment lengths. So I'm going to go and try to make a uh, segment in between to, to make a uh, complete triangle. Here is a, a segment that can complete the triangle. You'll notice that this segment is length of 3.93, which is less than the sum of 5 and 7. Okay. What if I tried to build a triangle um, oh, with something that is bigger than 5 plus 7? Okay, 5 plus 7 is 12. What if I tried to build a triangle with a third segment that was length, let's say, 14? So starting at B, I'm going to make a segment of length 14. Okay, and you can see, I'll go ahead and show the uh, length here. Length 14. You'll notice now, I'm going to kind of play around with these and see if I can try to find a way to build a triangle. Okay, well, let's put this up. Oh, that's really big. Okay, we're going to move this point down here. Um, I can't do that. Let's see if we can move this. Oh, okay, let's see. Maybe I can get it now. And you'll notice what's happening here as I move these points around, okay, is that if I were to stretch this out flat, if I were to stretch out the 5 and the 7 out almost entirely flat, all right, and try to close up the triangle this way, I still can't do it because 5 plus 7 is 12. So even if these were in an almost completely straight line, the longest they could possibly reach would be 12. Okay? My third side here is 14. That means it's never going to close up. Okay? So any one of these, any two of the sides, if I add them up, they have to be bigger than the third side. 5 plus 14 is 19, which is bigger than 7. That's okay. But because two of the sides, when I choose them, the 5 and the 7, is equal to 12, that must always be bigger than the third side. So this is a triangle that cannot be built. The other way that we can build a triangle that's not quite right is if I start with 5 and 7, I'm going back. Whoop. If I start with a triangle 5 and 7, and I try to build a third side, okay, that's not going to be quite long um, enough. Let's build a segment of length 2. Okay, so if I build a segment of length 2, now we're trying to move this around. This one's actually going to, oh, let's see, can, can we get it to, ah, not quite, doesn't quite reach no matter how I, right? Okay, and this is a length of 2. Right, we can go ahead and label that here. Okay, this is a length of 2. Okay, now the only way we could make this work not quite there is it is that 5 plus 7 5 plus 2 is equal to 7 right so the only way this is actually going to close up is if 5 and 2 are laying on a perfectly straight line that's not really much of a triangle is it okay but if this is a any shorter than 2 there's no way it's going to work so i could change this okay if i were to get rid of this object and make a segment of length 1 then we can see it's really not going to work Here's my segment of length 1. No matter how I swing it, no matter how I swing it, 
this triangle cannot be completed because 5 plus 1 is less than 7. Any two sides, when they add them together, have to be bigger than the third side. And 5 plus 1 is 6, which is less than 7. So the triangle inequality is simply saying that you can't build a triangle if there's a situation where two of the sides don't add up to more than the third side. Okay? So it has to be that situation with any pair of two sides that you choose. All pairs of sides must add up to more than the other side. And that's the triangle inequality. Okay, um, let's talk about the other thing we want to talk about today, and that's the proportionality of angle measures versus sides. So here I've drawn a triangle, and I've labeled all the side lengths and all the angle lengths. And oh, there we go. And what I want to look at is the relationship between the angle lengths and the side lengths. In, pr in particular, I want to talk about the relationship between every angle and its opposite side. So if I move this around, right, what I'm interested in, in talking about here is the relationship between this angle measure of 54.6 and the opposite side, which is 7.01. Likewise, I'm interested in talking about angle measure 97.57 and its opposite side, 8.54. So I'm interested in that relationship in this triangle. Okay, and one thing I'd like us to, to look at here is let's take a look at the biggest angle in this triangle and we want to figure out where is the biggest side relative to it. Well, if we look at this, angle, this triangle right here, the biggest angle is 97.57. The biggest side is here, 8.54. It's opposite. Let's play around with it some more. Let's, let's change it so that we're going to make A now the biggest angle. Oh, that's a big angle, 100 degrees. If we look at the angle measure 100 degrees and we ask where is the biggest side relative to it? Oh, it's opposite. All right. Let's play one more time. And I think we're starting to see a uh, situation here. Okay, The biggest angle is 99 degrees and the biggest side is 7.39. Um, and is, if you play around with these a little bit, you kind of get a sense as to why that might be true. Like the bigger the opening, the larger the side can be opposite it. And it is true that the biggest angle is always opposite the longest side of, in a triangle. Likewise, it's going to work the same way that the smallest angle will always be opposite the smallest side in a triangle. It like, doesn't matter how I play with it. My smallest side is 14.88. The smallest side is 3.97. So what this means is that in a triangle, in, in any triangle, the largest side is opposite the largest angle, and the smallest side is opposite the smallest angle. From that, we can also deduce that the middle and the middle are opposite too. All right? And that's all we need to talk about, is how we can build triangles and some limitations as to how triangles can be built. Thanks for watching.